Next up is Laura Jester. Uh, Laura is uh, near and dear to us in Lake Pepin because she's she's uh, doing a lot of work just upriver from us in the, in the south metro area. Laura has worked as a watershed conservationist with the Dakota County Soil and Water Conservation District since 1998. She is the administrator for the Lower Mississippi Watershed Management Organization and coordinator of the Vermilion River Watch Program and the Mississippi Makeover Project. Laura is a BS in aquatic toxicology and an MS in aquatic ecology from the University of Wisconsin, Stephen Point. Good morning. I have the opportunity to tell you just a, for a few minutes here about um, the Mississippi Makeover Project that I've been, have the pleasure of being involved in. I get the fun part of this TMDL. There's actually a lot of civic engagement that goes along, as you can imagine, um, when you're trying to put such a large project in place like, the, uh, like this TMDL. So I've been involved with this Mississippi Makeover Project for the last few years. Um, it's a plan for restoration just around the bend. It's just around the bend from a major metropolitan area, and that's what we would like folks to understand, is maybe you don't have to travel all the way to the Boundary Waters to get such a nice, uh, pristine kayaking, canoeing, fishing um, area. There's, there's a possibility of having one right here in our backyard. Um, this is a local effort. It's driven by citizens, but we do have a few major uh, partners. <coughs> it's, a, it's a project funded by the PCA, and there's a lot of support other than just monetary from the PCA as well. Um, Dakota County and the, and the SWCD were very involved as the project coordinators, and then the Department of Natural Resources, you'll hear, hear Tim Schlagenhoff next, and he has been behind the science end of this uh, project. So in general, uh, this project is, like I said, it's a, it's a local effort. It's to engage stakeholders to really envision uh, and plan for ecological restoration in, in a small section of the South Metro TMDL. We're talking about Spring Lake and the Lower Vermilion River and uh, Pool 3. So we're down here in Red Wing. So our project area is uh, Pool 3 of the Mississippi River and Spring Lake, which is just upstream of Hastings, and then also the Lower Vermilion River, which actually um, parallels the Mississippi River for 20 miles and has a similar impairment and, and similar situation. So that was tied into this project as well. So it's a, just a segment of the South Metro Mississippi TMDL. I'm not gonna bore you with that bureaucracy. Okay, uh, our project goals is the same project goals that everybody has in working in this field, of course. We want a, a healthy and restored ecosystem with uh, improved water quality and abundant wildlife that turns into uh, recreational opportunities and hopefully economic vitality in this area. There's also another underpinning of all this, and, and, and that's the congruent and complementary projects of all of the different agencies that are involved. It's not nearly as large as the Chesapeake Bay, but it's very similar. We have federal agencies, Army Corps of Engineers, National Park Service, Fish and Wildlife Service, all the way down through the, all the state agencies and then all the local governments in this area. And they all have their own projects and plans. Um, and, and eventually we want a comprehensive plan for implementing this large TMDL in this area. So we set out to identify and then invite particular local stakeholders to this process. We actually didn't put out a blanket invitation saying anybody who's interested because you tend to get a lot of the same old players. So we, um, we identified certain players in different sectors and invited them to be a part of this, um, this local process. We ended up with a very nice group of folks. We call them the citizen advisory group, although it's a bit of a misnomer. It's more of a larger stakeholders. We're all citizens, and they are certainly residents of their residents of this area in our group. But it's also a lot of um, non-governmental organizations, state agencies, local agencies, local officials, and so forth. So, um, and we've had five meetings over the last two and a half years, and um, this is some of the work that this group has done. Again, we ask them to envision successful ecological restoration in, in just this area, to set aside where the pollution was coming from and not worry about the Minnesota Basin or the Twin Cities area or those, those other areas, but just in our area, in our backyard, what does that successful ecological restoration look like and how can we take steps right here um, to get us there? 
what are their indicators of that restoration? So we had folks in the meeting talking about things like wanting to see their paddle in the water when they canoed, or wanting to go back to that great old fishing hole that they knew as a kid that's now sedimented in and they can't even get to that spot anymore. Talking about Lake Pepin and how quickly it's filling in and how we just might lose this lake. Um, and then macrovertebrates, aquatic uh, vegetation, aquatic waterfowl, and so forth. Those are the conversations that we had. <coughs> Along the way, we had to do some educating of this citizens group. We didn't know everything. They didn't know everything. They wanted a lot of information about the historic, um, historic data, historic data, anecdotal information about what this area looked like. We can't get back necessarily all the way to pre-settlement, but what did that look like? They needed to know where we were coming from. Um, so we, we had a lot of technical help, as you'll hear Tim talk about that, and we um, gave them information on some, some history. We uh, put together fact sheets on each of the general indicators that they had come up with. Um, we researched particular issues, had technical presentations, and so forth. We also have a pretty robust website that has all of the presentations that we've had through all of our meetings, all of our fact sheets, photos, those sorts of things. We've kept that up to date as well as a resource. Tim Schlagenhoff is going to go into more of this and show you the actual numbers and the data behind this. But in general, this is a list of indicators that this citizen advisory group, stakeholder group, came up with. The sedimentation, um, in the rate of sedimentation in Lake Pepin, water clarity, uh, aquatic vegetation, the amount of vegetation, uh, macroinvertebrates, and for that they actually got specific enough to say they wanted the mucket muscle back. It's been extirpated from this area and they wanted that one back. Um, that, that would be an indicator of success. Um, fish, and not just the, the, the fish that the, everybody goes out fishing for, but whole fish uh, communities. Um, and then waterfowl communities as well. In addition to their work uh, putting these indicators together, this group has actually been active as well. They um, helped put together a large open house uh, just over a year ago in Hastings where we had um, technical folks um, from all kinds of agencies come and we had some local officials speaking there. It was uh, fairly well attended. Um, they've also attended a bus and boat tour um, down in Pool 5 in the Weaver Bottoms of the Mississippi River where they have had successful uh, restoration through a series of drawdowns and island building. So that was very enlightening. Took a, a bus, started in Hastings, saw the degraded areas, and took it all the way down to Weaver Bottoms where we got on boats, and we took a, took a look at um, the restoration down there. The Hastings Environmental Protectors Group also organized a very large cleanup of Spring Lake, a much needed cleanup. It's a, um, <coughs> kind of a, a slow spot in the river, so it tends to collect a lot of debris. And then I think Tim might touch on this. Um, we didn't have a lot of waterfowl data for our area of the river, and so those have actually begun. Some data collection waterfowl counts to help us along that. As I mentioned, um, this is a it's a small area, but there's a lot of jurisdictions actually, multiple agencies, multiple plans, but it can seem like kind of a headache and a big mess, which it does to me sometimes, but it's really an opportunity for leverage and for partnerships and for, for collaboration. So um, I, I mentioned some of these, the Army Corps of Engineers environmental pool plans, everybody, everybody has a plan, the Spring Lake Park master plan, watershed plan, a CNR plan. So we're trying to bring all of these together in one congruence um, implementation plan ultimately and um, we're looking at both um, implementation in the river so major projects like uh, pool drawdowns and uh, island building um, very expensive projects unfortunately some rough fish removal tends to be a problem in some areas um, but then also what can we do on the land that is directly tributary to our project area we need land protection and land restoration, some actual standards and criteria, buffer standards and those sorts of things on the land in this area. So that's, uh, that's it. That's the Mississippi Makeover Project, the civic engagement end of it in a nutshell. And I think Tim Schlagenhoff will take it over with the, the science end of things. Thank you.